Hi there, Diana from Adirondack Girl at Heart. I teach vintage and antique lovers how to create successful antique businesses that they love. One of the ways I do that is through these videos. And today is part two of my amazing haul from a central Pennsylvania antique shop that nearly filled our van. Part one, I covered half, and part two, I'm gonna cover the second half. Let's get started. It's kind of an unboxing, except that I unwrapped everything because I thought that that would take a really long time and that it would be really noisy. I unwrapped everything, but then put it back in the box. So let's get started. This is an interesting find. I was really excited when I first saw it, thinking that it was Majolica. I'm still not certain. It is very heavy, so um, it's not like a lighter handmade ceramic piece. It makes me think Japan because the coloration, see how it's bleeding, you know, uh, really good early European Majolica would not look like that. And then the bottom is really weird. This was sanded and then painted this weird green color. It does have an incised mark that looks like an H or an M right there. So it's very confusing, but it was only $3 and it's in really good shape. No chips or crazing or anything like that. So I think someone will be interested in it. I would love to hear your thoughts on this piece, but let's presume that it's a later piece of Majolica. I will price it at about 30 to say $35 in my antique booth. I picked up this little plastic crate of tea tins because I put um, miniature bottle brush trees or other types of Christmas trees in them, sometimes with like a little Santa Claus and some other little decorations. And I sell them at a Christmas holiday craft show that I do every year. And I have an article on my website where I did this with larger tins, true antique and vintage tins, and I will link to that. But I thought that these would be cute, especially the, the plaid and the green and the white and the gold, but I will probably use all of them. And I sell them for about 12 to $15. Another Christmas item that I picked up is this imperfect putts house. I really liked the roof and this uh, crenellated trim here around the top, this red and white kind of check and the fence is really great these are called i think they're called green spot putts houses something like that the condition issue is here on the side the crenellated part um it's a castle type of a putts house it is marked made in japan on the bottom and i paid three dollars for it which i think is a really great deal and it should sell for about 25 Here's a couple of other Christmas buildings that were very interesting to me. They look like celluloid. They're not typical. They're a little bit lighter and they don't have the graining that early celluloid has, but a lot of people do refer to this kind of plastic as celluloid. Each of these cost $2 and I think they were to fit over large bulbs not completely sure about that but I really really thought that they were super cool I will try to sell them I will sell them as a set on probably Etsy or eBay and I will price them at about 30 25 to 30 dollars aren't they cool I thought they were cool a neat piece of ironstone a serving dish, um, not super decorative. It does have a little embossed design right there. And then right here, um, just a diamond shaped decoration. And it's not in perfect condition. It's got some browning here around the edges. It is marked Powell and Bishop, a very respected and old China company in England. And I would date this to the mid 1800s and a piece made primarily for export as because the English 
liked their ironstone decorated, whereas Americans prefer it white. So it was $3.50 at this antique shop. And I'm going to use, I have a method of removing browning in a blog post about cleaning ironstone. I'll link to that in the description. So I think that will clean up a little bit and I will price it at about 40, 40 to $45. And I picked up this Yardley box. I am considering an article about Yardley because I, I have quite a few pieces and it is a, an old English company. It held three bars of soap and it was a dollar. It would sell probably for four or five dollars. Here is a very cool picture. So I don't typically deal in um, items from this era, like the 1930s and 40s, but it this piece was $2. <laughs> I don't know if you can read that. $2. And the mark is Knowles Utility Wear. So Knowles Taylor and Knowles was a big pottery company, American pottery company back in the day. It does say made in the USA there. It isn't literally perfect condition. I think someone is gonna like that. So for $2, I could price it at 10, right? And that's five times in my money. Um, I will probably price it though at about 25 from my antique booth. And here's another piece, same idea, not something that I typically would pick up. This is marked Hall. It has a really pretty lid with those little pink flowers and then there the flowers are also on the handle it was three dollars and there's the hallmark on the bottom so 1930s 1940s super heavy kind of like ironstone this is uh kind of a almost restaurant wear but um not decorated like restaurant wear right this was made for the home and i will price it at about 30. and then here's another similar piece. This is Homer Laughlin, Homer Laughlin, <laughs> Oven Serve, made in the USA. Homer Laughlin made huge amounts of pottery. Pretty little pink floral design, obviously a pie plate, right? It was $3 and I will price it at about $18 to $20. It's a little enamelware pot, but look at these handles. I've never seen handles like that. They're not open, they're these flat handles. I just thought it was a really cute piece and it was half off. So it's marked eight, but it was $4 and oh, it was $4.50. There's the final price. It has a wooden um, handle, red, original red. This is making me feel like 1930s, this layered um, a handle like that. And I think it should sell for about 25, 25 to $28. And then the last piece in this box, I have two more boxes to go, is this. I have no idea what it is. It kind of looks like it would hang like this. It's got a hole in the back. It would hang like this. Is it a nutcracker? That's kind of what I'm thinking. You stick your nut in there and then you can um, screw this in, crack your nut, and then it falls out the bottom. <laughs> That's my best guess. It was $6, and I bought it just because the wood is beautiful. Um, I think it's mahogany, and it definitely has age, and like I said, super interesting. I'm hoping like $40 or $45. Anybody knows what it is, please let me know in the comments. I'm dying to know. Okay, here we go, box number two. I came across a few um, carpenter aprons. You know, they would be given away to carpenters um, because of the advertising. This is Boswell Lumber. It cost $2. It would have gone onto their belt right here and then they could throw stuff in there. So this design I thought was interesting and I love the red, white, and blue. I am, am going to soak it and um, clean it a little bit, see how that goes. I think it should sell for about 15 to $18. This was cool. People collect locks. This is not like a super rare lock, 
right? There's a lot of master's locks out there, but the lock is on the inside with two keys. It did cost $2. It's the box that I think is really cool and that a lock collector um, may be interested in. So the lock with the box, $12. My husband found this piece, my sweet husband. Adirondack style chair. Some of these uh, were made for flower shops. You'll see them, they could have held like a, a plastic or a terracotta pot. This could also, but this, this detail on the back, I thought was really, really cool. And it's finished. It was, um, has a light, like a satin finish on it, which is also unusual for those floral pieces. And so uh, the, the sticker is gone, but I believe it was 350. Well, maybe a dollar fifty. It's hard to remember. I think it should sell for about eighteen to twenty dollars. And then I continue to sell perfume on eBay and Etsy, but mostly eBay fairly well. I paid actually quite well. I paid ten dollars for this Estee Lauder box because I did a quick search on eBay which I have an uh, article on my website about how to do that. If you don't know how to do that yet, this was going for about 50 to $60. So that's why I picked it up and paid $10 for it, which is a lot for me. I also found two yellowware mugs. They were $1.50 each. And they're in really, really great condition. That has an incised mark on the bottom, it looks like. Uh, 16 or it could be LG but I think it's 16 and I have an article and a price guide on my website about yellowware so I'm always interested in adding to that but it also sells really well from my antique booth so I'm gonna price these at about 18 to 20 dollars each and you can see <laughs> I have a whole bunch of scissors in this one. These were 50 cents each, so I bought them all. They look really cute in like a ball of string or a spool of string and add to the quaintness, the farmhouse styleness of it, and um, I think helps to sell whatever you stick them in. So that's why I bought them. Here's a flask, not in great condition. You can see discoloration of the glass, right? But this is syrup, iode, der, grimalt, <laughs> Paris. I bought it because this is Paris and it has French words on it. So I think somebody who loves French antiques will be interested in that it was $2 and I will price it at about 12. 12 to 15. I have some ephemera 50 cent postcards. I thought that was cute for Valentine's Day. To my darling. That would be cute framed. To my love. These are from about the turn of the century. And then here's one, an Easter card with sweet, sweet sheep and little girls. And it was canceled on... 1913 or 1915 got some cool handwriting on the back there it has the, a cancellation mark right here that sort of ruins the whole look but i like to use these in projects i scan them and this can easily be removed during the editing process a couple of photographs these were a dollar each this is dated 1949 i just thought that is so fascinating, right? The, the um, uh, class there and how they're dressed and the sepia tones. Another one, not as in quite as good a shape, but um, still nice. This one is a little bit earlier, probably the 1920s. And then the final one, um, another class teacher right there in the center in the back. So I will sell these, I think for about five or $6. I'm gonna look at Etsy and see how they do their, um, the classroom pictures I mean, and I will scan them and I will use them in projects. Not like a super old sign, Mount Diablo Fruit Farm, but I think someone's gonna be interested in that. It was half price, so it's marked five, but it was 
half price, $250, and I will price it at about $25, $25 to $28, like that sign. And then a birdhouse that was also half off, so this was $250. Really nice um, farmhouse look with sort of um, slightly chippy and not perfectly clean. <laughs> nice antique white color, I think. It should sell for about $25, $22 to $25. Okay, let's take a look at the third and final box. Celluloid, not selling great these days, but hard for me to resist, but I think it's beautiful. It was half off of $4, so it was $2 for both pieces. The mirror alone should sell for about $25 on Etsy. I haven't really decided what to do with brushes, but I have an article planned on my website about celluloid. Here's another piece of ironstone. This one is marked John Edwards and has pretty design on it. It would be preferable to not have the design. It would sell better and for more because people prefer white, but it was $4. I couldn't leave it sitting on the shelf. There's the mark on the back and it has an incised mark. The pattern is called chrysanthemum, which refers to these flowers here. They have a little bit of pink on them. I would price it at about $18. If it didn't have any of this decoration, it would sell on Etsy for about $35. Here's an, another piece of ironstone, a little more desirable. It was half off of $3.50, so $1.75. Love this embossed design. It's marked ironstone Powell and Bishop like the serving dish that I, I showed you earlier. It should sell on, on Etsy for about 25. Here's a piece of yellowware that I just think is gorgeous. Super heavy piece, super flawed <laughs> chip and a crack right here. But I have found that people really like these butter cro crocks and even it would have had a lid. And even with this amount of damage, it should sell for about $20. And I paid um, $7 for it because I couldn't resist. A couple more pieces. Here's a little yellow wear dish. I feel like it's new because it has really nowhere on the bottom. This mark is illegible. That makes me feel like it's either old or new, I don't know. It was $3, so couldn't leave that behind. And I will price it at about 16. My husband and I both saw this and when we found out it was half off, that's when I decided to get it. It's 10, it's new newer obviously it was mark 10 half off i paid five and at fourth of july it, it should fly out of the booth 28 dollars, 28 to 32. i also could put it outside for a little while and let it age and sort of distress itself final piece from this amazing antique shop is this wooden casket love this detail right here in the front and open it up. It has a plywood bottom, which is really interesting to me because the rest of the box isn't plywood. I'm not sure what it's made out of. The back looks like pine to me, but the lid does not look very piney. And then these hinges are terrible. They don't look old at all, do they? But super nice piece that I will price at about 35. 35 to 38 dollars I think. So that's it for my antique finds at the amazing Central Pennsylvania Antique Mall that I can't wait to get back to. <laughs> my father-in-law is turning 90 this year in June so we will be headed back for sure. So like I said I hope you enjoyed seeing my finds and as always happy hunting.